Listen to him. 
Right. Uh, in the name Lord Jesus, I speak. Uh, now we are going to touch on the, uh, the fourth uh, aspect concerning the uh, the mode of baptism. Yeah, that is baptism must be done uh, in living water. Right. Now I think we have looked at some example here yeah, from the Old Testament scriptures, like. Right? Um, uh, the example of Noah, you know, <clears throat> now when the water came, you know, it, it's like a deluge, right? and so the entire ark was uh, engulfed in water, right? and so uh, that is a form of living water as well. Okay, now um, uh, crossing the Red Sea as well, right? Red Sea is flowing natural source of water okay now we come to uh, the prophecies now uh, jeremiah we turn to jeremiah chapter chapter two okay jeremiah chapter two um, Verse 13, uh, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. Right, so uh, God uh, is like likened to uh, the source of living water. Right? So now, like what I said, when we are baptized, we are baptized into Christ. Right? So I think it fits very well into the idea when we're baptized into, um, when we're baptized in living water. Natural source of water. Okay. Um, uh, what else? Um, Micah. We turn to Micah. <coughs> Chapter 7. Okay. Uh, Micah chapter 7, we read uh, uh, verse 19. And he will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. And you will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Now, I, I think uh, the Bible tells us, uh, and eventually all the water, right, the natural source of water, like flow out to the sea, <clears throat> the rivers, yeah? according to uh, 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 Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Yeah? Uh, please read uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Yeah. Um, uh, verse 7, yeah? all the rivers run into the sea, right? So he said it's important like to baptize in a natural source of water. Like river, lake. Okay. <clears throat> now I think we have in Africa, you know, uh, Lake Victoria is a massive uh, it's a massive lake, huh? And 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 the source of this lake is what River Nile. Yeah. And River Nile flows out but to the Mediterranean Sea, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Right. So, that's why it's, it's, it's acceptable to baptize people in in the lake, right? <coughs> now, so, because God is going to deal with our sin and by casting it into the depths of the sea, right? so that is the uh, one of the reasons why. Yes. Huh? I think somewhere underneath is flow out of the sea as well, you know, water table, you know, yeah, but I thought it's like underneath is like an ocean of water, uh, and when there is an opening somewhere here, for example, the wash for the water, you know, flows out, and I think so. Okay. 
living water. Now, if you look at uh, the example in the New Testament scriptures, John the Baptist, where, where did he perform baptism? Right? River Jordan. Only River Jordan? Apart from River Jordan, where did he baptize? Where did he perform baptism? <coughs> Chapter, uh, chapter, chapter three of John. Yeah? Uh, John chapter three. Uh, we read verse twenty-three. Uh, John chapter three, verse twenty-three. Now John also was baptizing in Anion near Salem, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized. So, chapter 3, verse 23. Right? So, they baptized people in a place where there was much water. Now, I think we need to understand the baptism of Jesus yeah, a bit more. In the time of Jesus, if I'm correct, you know, they were under the control of the Romans. Right? And I think the, the Romans knew how to enjoy themselves. They have many, what, like what? Uh, what do you call it? Buffs, you know, bathing places, the public ones, right? Now, in the time of Jesus, you know, Jesus did not choose to be baptized in one of those places. Yeah, instead, you know, he went out of his way. Right, he went to uh, River Jordan, right, to be baptized by John the Baptist. Okay, I think quite clearly, you know, and Jesus. Uh, actually set a very good example right <clears throat> uh, for us uh, baptism must be done in a body of water which is flowing natural uh, the natural source of water okay yeah uh, so jesus was baptized in um in where uh river jordan yeah but right. now, what about the apostle? <clears throat> okay, again, we read the Acts chapter 8, right? So, um, <clears throat> now, Acts chapter 8, yeah? Uh, verse 26 says they were journeying along the road which uh, went down from Jerusalem to Gaza. And um, so after preaching to the eunuch, and uh, you find that, uh, you know, um, uh, it was uh, the eunuch who asked, who requested for baptism. <clears throat> so he said to Philip, look, there was that water there. What prevent me from getting baptized? So, and obviously in, in, in the desert, you can only find water in a desert spring, right? quite clear. Now, we come to chapter 16. We know that the family of uh, Lydia uh, uh, and Lydia herself were baptized, right? And some, so some uh, people said, you know, at that time, because uh, the... Uh, uh, sorry, the, the jailer, the Philippine jailer, right? They were baptized as well, yeah? No. Where were they baptized? Where were they baptized? And some people said because uh, there was no water in the prison, so most likely, you know, they have been baptized by sprinkling water on, on the forehead or whatever. Right? It's a new idea. You know? But it's very unlikely because if you read uh, chapter 16, yeah, uh, verse 13. And on the seventh day, we went out of the city to the river side. So there was a river at least. So it's quite a massive one. We don't know how big the river is, but we can. We would assume that there, there must be some uh, tributaries, branches. Okay, and so 
uh, you know when the prison door uh, sprang open, right? So the prisoner could have gone out, but uh, it was Paul who asked uh, the, the jailer not to kill himself because they did not escape, right? They didn't run away from uh, from the prison. And so they must have gone out to the river to get baptized. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Riverside. Riverside. Okay. Uh, any other example concerning living water? Living water. Okay. If there are no more questions, I want you to read uh, uh, Zechariah. Uh, Zechariah. Uh, Zechariah, uh, we read uh, chapter 13, verse 1. Uh, chapter 13, verse 1. Now in that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem, for sin and for uncleanness. Okay, for sin and for uncleanness. So a fountain uh, shall be opened. He said, you know, uh, right, yeah, there will be a, a fountain of living water. Okay, now we also read uh, chapter 14. Mm. Now in that day it shall be that living water shall flow from Jerusalem, half of them towards the eastern sea and half of them towards the western sea, in both summer and winter it shall occur. Now how, how, how do we piece them together and explain that that is uh, indeed uh, necessary to baptize, to perform baptism in living water. Okay, now we know that the fountain here is what? the cleansing fountain. Yeah? And it was first opened by what? By who? Jesus Christ. Am I? Yeah? By Jesus? Is that correct? Now when Jesus was pierced by the side, huh, what does the Bible say? Okay. Blood and water. Okay. Blood and water. Yeah. B plus W. Uh, blood and water came out. And when, when you read the first John, what does it say? Uh, okay. We read the first John. Yeah. Okay. We first read the John 19. Yeah. Just to make sure. Okay, sorry, John 19. Uh, verse 34, yeah. But one of the soldiers pierced his side. 19, uh, chapter 19, verse 34. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. Now, verse 35, and he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you may believe. Okay? Now, blood and water. Huh? Now, we read um, uh, 1 John. Um, Okay, and there are three that, verse 8, uh, 5, 8. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one, the spirit, the water. Now, here is water plus blood. Okay, now, from the description given in John, when the blood was first shed, it said blood and water. But in John, there is like a reverse of order. So it's like water and blood. Right? Now, today, where can we find the blood? It's in the water. Right? Now, how do we know that the, uh, there is blood in the, what we call, baptismal water? How do we know? Because of the spirit. Yeah? You get what I'm saying? Right, so I think when Zechariah said and a fountain yeah, is open for the cleansing 
of the transgressions of the, the inhabitants of the house of David, right? But it's the what it like points to uh, the future that you know, and the blood can actually be found in the water with the presence of the spirit. Okay, without the spirit, it is impossible. Are you with me? You understand what I'm saying? Right? Blood and water and water and blood. So the where can we find the where can we find the blood? In the in the baptismal water with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now I want to turn back to Zechariah and look at it more closely. Okay, now uh, verse 8. Huh? And in that day it shall be that that living water shall flow from Jerusalem. Now, we find that not uh, any living water, right? And the living, the body of water must be from Jerusalem. Okay, I look at it in this way. You know, Jerusalem represents what? The church, right? That's the church of God. Am I, am I correct? Yeah, and you you know only the church of God, right? You know who performs baptism, yeah, has the presence of the Spirit, and therefore we have the blood for the cleansing of sin. You get what I'm saying, right? It's like this water must, this baptismal water must be, uh, must be the baptismal water of, of the, that, that is done by the church or whatever call it but it's not from any other church it must come from jerusalem the church of god if you get what i'm saying if you are from sda or whatever you try to perform baptism in living water there's no blood there's no cleansing okay only from the church of god jerusalem is it clear does it make sense yeah all right You know, you know, you know. Today, the, um, I always feel that we are so blessed. You know, um, because in that uh, we we have the spirit. How many of you have seen blood in water during baptism? Raise your hand. <laughs> what do you want to see blood in, in, in the water? What? Huh? To, visualize God's to visualize. I thought I thought you, you, you live by faith. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we 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 perform baptism by faith, not by sight. Never in my life. I don't mind it if I don't see it. You know why? Because I know I have the Holy Spirit. That's the most important thing. And I know every time when baptism is done, the blood is there. All right? That's enough. Okay? I, I don't need to see it, to be honest. I don't want to see it. <laughs> and as long as the Spirit is there, I'm, I'm happy. Okay? So uh, I also want you to read uh, 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 Ezekiel. Uh, chapter Ezekiel chapter forty seven. <coughs> Uh, 
So we read verse one here. Yeah. Uh, then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple towards the east. For the front of the temple faced east, the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. Right now, I think in verse 12, it says the water flows from the sanctuary. Right? Now, we always say that the temple or the sanctuary represents the what? The church. The church of God. Yeah, we find that in the new, uh, new temple, the vision concerning the new temple, that I think the most uh, uh, interesting feature you know, of the temple is the, the water flowing from the sanctuary and with the power to heal as well. Okay. So I think, I think you know, by piecing all these uh, verses together, to me in this way, that it makes sense to, to me. It makes sense to me. Right. Now, so baptism, no doubt, must be done. Yeah. In accordance to the scriptures, meaning with strict adherence yeah, to the mode of baptism. All right. And I think uh, what is even more important is the presence of the spirit. Right? The spirit must be there. Okay. The baptism must be done by the chosen church of God, the true church of God. Okay, so that's why you, you, it seems that you know the living water actually flows out from Jerusalem to the eastern sea and west sea, and the western sea. So, you know, it gives us the idea that you know if the baptism is not done by Jerusalem, the Church of God, then it would not be efficacious. The sins would not be forgiven. Yeah, and that's that's the the point I'm making. Okay, <clears throat> so any questions concerning the uh, living water? Any questions? Is that clear? Is that okay? Yes. Because there was a river there nearby. Is it also? If he was not baptized in, in, in the river, where was he baptized? In the prison? No, no, no. Because where Roman hopped off from the Israel Hmm. Okay. Okay, I tell what, you know, you can Google or whatever. You, you know, the 12 apostle writing, you can find out. You know, initially, I think at the initial phase of the church, they performed baptism in living water. And, yeah. The 12 apostle writing. You can just Google and find out yourself. Okay. Now I think the fact that Jesus was not baptized in one of those uh, uh, man-made pools uh, tells us that baptism must be done in living water because he did not choose to be baptized in one of those places. Right. I think quite clearly. Um, okay. Any other questions? Too much baptism for five hours or so. Okay. Um, I think tomorrow we'll talk about uh, uh, you know uh, the blood. Right? We'll talk a bit about the blood, and we'll also talk about the infant baptism. Yeah. 
टॉपिक है ना टेन पर बात कीजिए ओके एनी क्वेश्चन यस या मैन विद मेनी क्वेश्चन सो गो नेचुरल आई लॉस टैगनेंट आई मीन तो क्या लगता है यार तो बैपाइज है ना बैपाइज है ना यस बट इफ 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 यू हैव डॉग देन व्हाई यू वांट टू गेट बैपाइज है बैपाइज इन द सी Yeah, baptize people in the cattle. Yeah, play safe. Don't do that. <coughs> yeah, don't baptize. Don't baptize them. Yes. Lakes. Yes. If there's no outlet, okay, no. Yes, don't don't get baptized. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, what are you saying? <laughs> saying. <laughs> okay, but we know that that is not the practice of Jesus, no, the practice of the apostles. So that's why we don't do that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm not a biologist, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think, as long as the water goes into the sea, then I think it's ocean. That's okay. Don't baptize there, then. Don't forget. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Why don't you ask your father? <laughs> <laughs> yes, brother. Yes. Sorry, I can't hear you, Rama. Hmm. Oh, no, we'll come to that. But uh, the the subject on Baptist, yeah. Maybe on Friday we'll talk about it. Yeah. But I think that is important as well. Because we'll touch on, you know, the I think recently people, you know, try to dig out our history, TJC history, and talk about it. Like the the early workers, they were not, uh, they were not. Uh, <laughs> so, we'll talk about it on Friday, I think. Yeah, so, <clears throat> but any question? Everyone is tired, so I'm tired also. So, yes. Uh, uh, I was asked this question. Um, I, the question was, um, like I told him about my practice of this uh, spiritual path. Um, is it thing that's related to the grace of God or anything? So, like, how do you explain that the grace of God is dependent on practicing different Okay, it's talking about we are saved by grace. Is that what you're saying? So, why do we limit it? Uh, the limit, I mean, the grace of God to living water or whatever. Okay. Um. Um. Okay. We read. Uh, please read uh, uh, Ephesians. Okay, he's asking the question. I think is related to sa saving by grace. Now I believe in this. The Bible does not contradict itself. So, 
um, every question raised against the belief of the church, uh, by the grace of God, I believe we should be able to find an answer to, to every question raised. Now we turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Okay. Uh, we read verse 8. Yeah? Now, uh, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. I think many Christians, you know, uh, uh, say that baptism is a kind of work, it's a form of work. And today, according to Paul, we are saved through the grace of God. All right. Now, that's what I think. I think. Uh, I think Paul defines, you know, uh, the meaning of saving by grace. Right? Okay. What does it mean, saving? By grace, right? Now, right, we read uh, chapter 2, verse 5. The answer is in verse 5, I think. All right, now, now, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace we have been saved. Saving by grace means you need to go through the process of being dead in sin with Christ and being raised. And what, what is that process? What is that process? Hello. Baptism. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Is that also? So if you say you have been saved by grace, then you, 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 you need to make sure that you are dead in your trespasses and being raised together with Christ. And when does that happen? Baptism. Simple. Yeah. yeah. Right? And and some people said you need to have faith, faith in God, yeah, and not baptism, right? And is faith the safe? Okay, now what what does faith in, entail? Right, there are two parts. One is you believe that Jesus is the Savior. How do you spell Savior? Okay, All right. And the other one is you believe in the Word. Yeah. Now I think when you talk about faith in relation to uh, salvation there is one more element that you need to consider that is you need to have faith in baptism in that process okay now we turn to colossians chapter 2 Okay, we read verse 12 very carefully. Yeah? All right, now, bear it with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith, what? In the working of God who raised him from the dead. Now, you know that, you know that God raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah? We need to have faith in that process. You get what I'm saying? In the working of God. If God has raised Jesus from the dead and likewise, by getting baptized, we shall also be raised with and we need to have faith in that process. Is that clear? Hello. Does it make sense to you now? Yeah? And so, you know, it's like faith is not just like, oh, oh God save me, I believe in you, that's it. No. You need to believe in that process and, and also you need to go through that process. Okay. Yeah. How can you have faith in baptism at the same time? Okay. I will come to that infant baptism tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So I tell you the, the word of God is, is wonderful. It's so connected. Seriously. I think the, the only thing that we need to do is to to, to be a bit more careful in our reading. And you will find all the answers there. Okay. Now also, I think it's, it's important to know that, all right? Now, to, to baptize or to perform baptism is not invented by us. 
we have not invented the idea of baptizing people. No. Okay? And you find that baptism is an instruction given by God, by Jesus. Uh, we, we can say it's a God-initiated idea. It's from God. It's not from us. Right? Right? Now, uh, that's, why, that's why I think, uh, you know, <coughs> baptism is, if we said baptism is a kind of work, then I would say baptism is a kind of work, work of faith, if you, if you, if you know what I'm saying. Right? Now, I, 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 I accept baptism, I undergo baptism because uh, baptism is the prescription that God has given to me for the cleansing of my sins. Okay? So it's, it's, a, kind, it's a deed of faith or a work of faith. Yes, go on. Yes, you need to believe. Yes. Not only you believe in Jesus, you believe that God has died for you and by going through that, your sins are forgiven. Yes. You have to accept it. Yes. Uh, um, I, I think in the true Jesus church, in the true Jesus church, um, we did baptize people who were not very sincere. Like, you know, some people uh, came into the church because uh, he, he liked someone in the church. Uh, pretend to be serious. And I baptized. Right? And then later we found out, ah, too late already. This guy is not genuine. But we, we didn't baptize him again. You, you know what I'm saying? So if, if later on he happened to, to come back to the church and he, and he became fervent or whatever, we, we didn't baptize him again. Yeah. So we believe that the baptism is effective. You know, I think the, uh, uh, a similar example, a parallel example is Simon the Sorcerer. Yeah? In chapter 8, he was baptized. And, and Peter was like, Why are you to perish with your money? You know, so, and repent. But Peter never said, Get baptized again. No. Right. But obviously, we have to make sure that people who, who are coming in, they are sincere, they are genuine. Right. And they do not just come in for, for, for any other reason. You know, sometimes in high area, it's very hard to, to tell, you know, very hard. That's why we need wisdom from God, you know, spiritual eyesight to, to know exactly who is genuine and who is not. It's very difficult. Okay, any more questions? Yes. Is it wrong to baptize someone if you know that he or she doesn't truly be genuine in their faith? If I were the Baptist, then I would not baptize the person. Mm. So then what if they have a condition? Like what? I don't know the answer. But you still have to believe before you baptize the person. Mm. Yeah, but what if they don't baptize There's nothing you can do, but he has to believe first. He needs to, to express his faith first before we baptize. Yes. Then he is responsible to God. Yes, then he is responsible to God. Yeah, if he said he believes, yeah, and he said he's willing to follow what what the church has taught him or whatever, yes, it's on him. Are, are you a genuine believer? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Sorry. Sorry, I take my question, but... Uh, 
But it's too late now, I know. Okay. Any other question? No? Somebody that, that, that has been baptized, must say that. Baptized in a PKD? No. Oh, okay. Let's say that for argument's sake, they get chosen. And I know you'll cover this on Friday. Mm. But it is, it is mandatory. Mm. It is. Yeah. Okay. You know, even in, in, in China, as far as I know, you know, there are, there are TJC churches. There are TJC churches in the north, but they have not been practicing the. The, the the full set of our belief, yeah, and many of them, you know, were rebaptized in the TJC. You know, I was told in the year two zero one three, yeah, about twelve thousand from the north were baptized again in the TJC. Hmm. Yeah. I know you're a doctor. Well, we know you're a doctor. <laughs> okay, go on. Remember your mother in law. I, I tell what, I get uh, Sister Christine to testify. She's your the mother in law. My mother in law. <laughs> you know, because to me, she is like a child. Right? She could not make up her mind so many times. Yeah, she said, "Oh, I want to go and back," and then she change her mind. No, no, no. You know, so I think to me, it's very simple. As long as the family members have faith in the process in God, then we can baptize her because she is just like a kid. Uh, infant baptism. Uh, yeah. Okay, does it make sense? Yeah. Well, yeah. No. Whatever. Yeah. Read that time. All right. Any other question? Yeah, silly question. No. Sorry. No, I didn't. I didn't baptize. <laughs> Excuse me. No. no, not me. The churches in China, not me. Hello, hello. There are, there are many churches in China, okay, that stick to the, the co correct uh, set of belief, right? And the work is that baptized with those from the north, 12,000 of the north. Okay, any more? Feel free. Yes. <laughs> you mean there, there are some parasites in the water? No, she said. Oh. Um, you know, in the year 2002, I did baptism in Kenya. I, well, I think I was bitten by something. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. And from there, I, I got a liver infection. And it lasted for about two years before it cleared. So, well, 
I guess you, you just have to do it anyway. Or you put on a swimsuit too, no? <laughs> <laughs> and ready to swim away. No, no we still do it anyway. We still do it. Uh, yeah, we we do it by faith then. Okay. Final question. Uh, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. I'm teaching <laughs> baptism. <laughs> I'm teaching baptism. Okay, go on. Yes. Oh, uh, you're saying how do you know that someone is pretending? Yeah. And well, how do you know? Mm. I, I, to me, I, I believe in this because this is the church of God, right? And this is where the light of God is. It's only a matter of time, you know. And this pretender will will be exposed. Is what I believe. Okay, and I, I believe God has His way to do it. And how he's going to do it, I do not know. But he will do it. Okay. Now, I think as for um, um, uh, those who do not have the Holy Spirit, okay, but have some kind of spirit in him, I think it's very simple. According to John, yeah. Um, like we know that today we have the Holy Spirit and also we have the truth yeah? and we believe in the truth and we receive the Holy Spirit so if I come to you and said to you that now I don't believe in baptism safe anymore or any longer then you can question the Spirit within me <coughs> that cannot be the work of the Holy Spirit you understand what I'm saying right? by listening to the message that the person preaches you can deduce whether the Spirit within him is the spirit of truth or the spirit of error. And we read um, uh, First John. Chapter four. Uh, we read verse 6. Yeah? And we are of God, he who knows God hear us, and he who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now, we refers to the apostle. That's why we said, yeah? And the church, the TJC, is built upon the foundation of the apostle. Right, so, whatever the apostle preached before, we do likewise today. Right? So, if anyone uh, who does not believe in, you know, what the apostle preached, then we know that the spirit within is not the spirit of truth. Okay. Now, that's why I have been saying it early on. You know, when we talk about the doctrine, it's not a matter of opinion. Please bear this in mind, because we are dealing with with, with the spirit here. We have to be very careful. All right. And we know, we know today we have received the Spirit because we have been given the truth. That's why we receive the Holy Spirit. Now, for whatever reason, if we choose not to abide by the truth that we have received, then we are in danger of being what? Being possessed by another Spirit. All right? Please, don't, don't risk your own life. It's, it's a very serious matter. You know, I fear for those people who, who go out there and set against the church, preach against the church. They are mad. I'm telling you. Clean. They are dealing with the Holy Spirit here. What? We cannot preach against the, uh, the truth that the church has received. No one is above. No one can change the word of God. No. If 
Coba yang saya ukur. I think we have enough, yeah. That's enough for today. Let's pray.